Well, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to X4 with Star Wars Mod. Today we're looking at the Dreadnought. Yeah, this is going to be the final introduction of the ships that we're going to be using. Uh, actually, no. Actually, no. There's there's another ship, but we'll do another video on that one. Um, but coming up to the Wolf Pack, I know I mentioned a couple times on stream. I know you guys are looking forward to the video. I'm looking forward to it, too. But we need to have a nice little baseline, what Wolf Packing is all about. Today, when we're looking at the Dreadnought, I'm super stoked for this ship. It's like, it is the back of any fleet. It doesn't matter if you make an Imperial fleet, a Rebel fleet, a clone fleet, even a, um, you know, like the Trade Federation, CIS, and all the droid stuff. Yeah, even they got Dreadnoughts. It's like, it's fantastic that you're able to have the Dreadnought going every which way you want to go even if you want to just go straight mercenary like we do on the live streams but yeah let's just go on ahead and hop straight into it because i'm super excited about this one all right so what we're we running on today so, right now our stat's sitting at 729,000 shield, I mean, sorry, hull, uh, 603,740 shields, uh, average group shields of 44,000, that's not bad, average turret weapon output of 5,800, speed 135, she's not the fastest, she's not the fastest, she does have some pretty good acceleration though, boost speed gets her to 405, which isn't bad, travel speed is 6,750, 6, so it makes it pretty quick out there in the travel space. She only has 4,500 uh, container storage. And remember when I said she's got a hangar? She only has two small docks and she owns a capacity of 10. So that gives you a total of 12 fighters for it. Which is good enough escort, especially if you're packing this ship in with other ships. All right, so what are we rocking here? We got all around Mark III's. Yeah, light manual motors. You guys don't know about it. Best shield for anything that says light or extra light. You want to go with Mandalorian, Mandal motors for sure. All right, so we're rocking uh, X-17s. They're okay. They're not the most range, not the most uh, rate of fire, but they do hit pretty hard. So we're running 20 of those, 10 per side. So as you guys can see, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 10 per side. Small turrets are running the QD quad lasers. You also pick those up, manual motors. They're the orange tip quad lasers. And we also got X-15s on the front. As you guys can see, it's like, ah, those, those are some really good turrets. You guys know how much I love the X-15s. Fantastic turrets. And yeah, that's total over. So she's got six of those. I think three in the front, three in the rear. Um, then for the QD, she's got 14 total. Uh, let's see. She's also packing some cargo drones, repair drones. Already using some satellites. Uh, she has a crew capacity of 56, ladies and gentlemen. 56. So how does she stack up against the other larges? So we're actually going to go through a range of larges. And the reason I want to go through a range of them is because of the Dreadnought here. Let's see if I can find her. There we go. She's kind of an in-between, if that makes sense. Yeah, she's a bit of an in-between. Um, the other thing is, I'm going to go ahead and just give her the best of the best that she can run. All right. As you guys can see about the shield suit. It's like if you guys watch the shield Mega Jewel 603. Just so you guys know. Mandel motors. All day. Mandel motors. Alright. So we're going to confirm on that. We're going to add in um, the Arquettons. And we are also going to add in. A Vindicator. All right, so that way we can see that stats are all over the place. So yeah, she's definitely the slowest. She has the most hull, so always bear that in mind. She has the most hull, 729,000 over her competitors. 359 on the Arquettons, 590 on the Vindicator. Uh, but she's not packing the best shields. Vindicator's got her beat, and we're going to even beat that here in a second. Uh, we're going to remove the Arquettons. But just so you guys can see, is like larges have a wide range of what you're looking for in a ship. Do you want more firepower? Do you want more speed? Do you want more agility? Do you want more shields? Do you want more guns? So like, there's a wide option to choose from. 
Um, as you guys can see, she's not the most maneuverable here. She is the slowest in every single category. The only thing she's got going over uh, the Arquettons is just the stray speed. That's about it. Um, she's got the average turret weapon output of 5,705, just like we looked at earlier. But compared to the Vindicators, 5,913, it's a little bit of an ouch. She does have the most group shields, though. But then again, you got to think about how many turrets she actually has packing on her. So she's got a lot more turrets than the Vindicator. And the Vindicator is still beating her. But we're going to go ahead and get rid of the arc buttons here just so we can add in the MC-40. And we're going to go with the B for the torpedoes. All right. So as you can see, still has the most hull, but not near as much shields. MC-40B has twi almost twice as many shields. Average group is still lower, and the average turret weapon output compared to the MC-40B is also lower. But then again, MC-40B doesn't have to go through shields. She's got those heavy proton torpedoes. She packs a big punch. And to add insult to injury, like she's going to be able to maneuver outside the range of the Dreadnought, if need be. Get that one million shield back. Also has the highest recharge rate there, too. Well, uh, other than Vindicator, Vindicator actually has the most recharge rate, but that's a different story. Dreadnought also has the lowest radar range. Yeah, she can't see very far. She can only see 40 kilometers, whereas your XLs and even this Vindicator here have 50. So also bear that in mind. Uh, she doesn't have the most crew. She packs no missiles. She's got a lot of things going against her, but then again, she's a very old girl. So we're going to see how she actually does in gameplay. But yeah, I'm going to try to see if I can f try to find some fights here. We're going to be bringing some more Dreadnoughts there. I'm sure you guys can see. But yeah, we're going to be packing in a lot of firepower and a lot of good stuff today. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm bad. I just want to get caught up in this life. I'm crazy, I'm bad. Doing no cap. Only God wants you better go live it up. Cash in the bag, stadium pack. Baby, I'm bad. Yeah. Baby, I'm bad. This is what we're going to be showcasing today. This, my friends, is some dreadnoughts. We've got six of them. We're on one. We got five supporting, and we got a bunch of GS80s. Um, but we really want to showcase what the dreadnought can do as well. Uh, we got some for our 41s, but not many. Uh, they're mainly just in and out and about, uh, mainly just to get clean, help clean up fighters and such like that, just to get rid of the annoying stuff from time to time. Other than that, though, uh, we're heading out. We're going to start uh, trying to engage the station and probably draw those uh, neutron stars and defenders over and see what we can do against them. All right, we're inside shooting range of his turrets and ours. All right, so here we are. Should be taking fire shortly. There it goes. All right, so there's a defense platform over here on the left. Yeah, there's a twin ring. So we're going to try to tuck up in. Now those W38Ts actually hurt. They hurt quite a lot.
work pretty well. The other dreadnoughts are here now too. And it looks like we haven't really pulled anybody over here yet. And we're over in fire. That's one W on B down. Awaiting orders. Alright, so we're gonna try to wolf pack something. I know we're pretty damaged, but we can still send the rest of the fleet after it. Let's see, we got two Awaiting neutron orders. stars way out here, so let's go ahead and set kind of objects there. Auto engaged. So we can get everyone else engaged with the autopilot. Looks like there's a lot of enemy fighters and such that are actually flocking over to it too, so. So we got new two two new neutron stars here. We're damaged, but we should be alright. Disengage. Fighters launching now. And we're gonna do dreadnought stuff by uh not clever move. Just setting up just sitting here, just taking it. Awaiting orders. So we got bombers and such around us. Alright, we're gonna slope on over to the right. Especially since we got enemy torpedoes out. Sorry for switching to MB-20, I just want to see where the health is at. That is not a good idea. Incoming missile. Danger. Oh, sadly hit. Some of these black sunships. Since we got so many enemy fighters around, around. Yeah, they're going out of the little drop hanger out of the bottom. Now we got ourselves a fight. Taking serious damage. Oh no, we just lost the GS eighty. You're not much of a pilot, are you? That's okay though, because we're about to be finishing off this guy. Time to switch. switch Neutron that. Star Cruiser. Oh man, I love loot from battles now. Alright. Well, this is a proper fight. Affirmative. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a stolen ISD with Pure tons of enemy fighters coming out, but we're going to be moving in to engage. All right, so we're in the thick of it, and we're going to have our dreadnoughts. All right, our dreadnoughts moving right now. We've got all these fighters we've got to deal with first. But we're taking tons of fire now. See if we can try to beat the meta of all these fighters. We were hit. You were done. Acknowledged. All right, then. You lost. Alright. 
Rules and tons of fighters, but that's what we basically want to attend. We want to keep all these bombers off all our dreadnoughts. A lot of dreadnoughts are moving in. You're going to regret that. Well, I mean, look at the fighters out here. Tractor beams come from these scrugs. You had it now. Our GS 80s are here. They're getting mixed in. Well, this is actually a great test for the uh, GS 80s. Proton bomb there. Good thing that missed. Something hit us. Acknowledged. Not seeing any other dreadnoughts, but we're in the middle of this nebula right now. Oh, there we go. And we are sweeping and clearing. All right. Let's see what happens when we have all the dreadnoughts come straight over onto this. Uh, which I think we can probably beat that ISD with just three. To be honest. With all these fighters and everything else going on. Incoming uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Danger. Ow. At least we got him. You're making a big mistake. You're in for it. That ISD's getting involved now. Alright. So let's go ahead and select our dreadnoughts here. Since you seem so keen, let's fight. And we're gonna tell them to attack immediate. Now by doing that, we're gonna have all the dreadnoughts go straight in to go to close quarters with the ISD. We've found That's what we want. something else. Also a great way to get loot. Just saying. Incoming missile. Danger. Damage is getting serious. Confirmed. Yeah, we got another drone out up there. That. So there's two dreadnoughts right there. Alright. We're going to be moving into range for that that ISD. The ISD is already in range of us. So as you can see, that one dreadnought's just taking full broadside right now. That GSA just got smacked so hard. No. I think we're going to try to stay beneath him. That's the best you can do. Would you like some more? Alright. So this is the important part. Now, I haven't switched him over to that yet. But. Something that I want you guys to be keenly aware of is... You can, always, you can always, always, always switch your targeting for your turrets to go to different categories. So what we just did is we're switching our um, single turbo laser turrets to attack capital ships. So we've got our strongest guns focusing in on the ISD. So that way we're not... Oh, there's another ISD. So we got two of them out here. And it looks like we're going to lose one. I don't think that guy's going to be able to get turn away and get our way. But we're going to try.
Alright. Danger. Now remember, we have more hull than we have shields. But we can always regenerate shields. We can't regenerate hull. But we do have our repair turrets. Our repair uh, drones. Last order could not be completed. So that dreadnought just died. His shields are offline now. Acknowledged. Oh, looks like we're gonna die too. Those guns hurt. No, we should be all right. Now the other thing is too, guys, is that this ship is actually good at going either direction, forwards or backwards. Just bear in mind that the engine cowling is really, really big on the dreadnought. So confirmed. Well, there's one down. All right, I'm gonna pause again so I can tell these dreadnoughts to turn around, and we got another ISD to deal with. Oh, secondary explosion. Secondary explosion. Imperial Star Destroyer 1. Got an enemy neutron star coming in, too. Now, remember, we don't have any carriers. I mean, we technically have one. We've got a harbor back there, but that's just for resupply and such like that, for missiles and such. Um, but... Yeah, we don't have any carriers. It's like we don't have a massive Zerg of fighters. We basically had four fighters per, so we had, what, 24 fighters in total? Well, 24 fighters is the same that a victory can, can hold by itself. These ISDs can go 72, and some of the vendors and uh, Providence classes can have even more. But look at the hailfire of one of those dreadnoughts on that ISD. Good news is that the ISD is mainly focusing in on getting rid of our GS 80s and such. We're almost in firing range. Once we're about at 12 kilometers, then we can open up. Yeah, these QDs do a fantastic job with uh, fighters because when they start coming in really, really close, like these, these turrets don't miss. But the QD RH3, both in green and red, all have the same exact stat. Right. So you're not missing out on anything. They have the same rate of fire, same uh, firing ranges. Alright, we're opening up. Awaiting orders. Question is, can we kill the ISD before he kills our dreadnought? And it looks like it. I'm not save. See if we can't get this ISD, this uh, dreadnought. But yeah, there's not many fighters left. You don't bother me. Now we can go back to attack all enemies. We need to do that with all of our dreadnoughts real quickly. Well, that just about wraps it up here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And if you guys are new around here, go ahead and hit like, subscribe down below. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Later, everybody.